I don't here? Know. We'll see what happens. I'm not even looking. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Welcome to Omni Bros Live. We are live on the air. My name's Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. And tonight, my co hosts are an all star lineup. Rarely have they been seen together before. We have Riley, Riley Mo, the Omnibus Collector himself. What's up, buddy? Not much. A lot. All at the same time. It's a great time to be alive. Wow, you said it all. There we go. And then we have Gabe. Gabe, how you doing? Doing great, man. It's hot here today, and there's a lot of hot topics to talk about with uh, some breaking news that happened that we'll probably get into, but who cares? <laughs> well, one or the other. Somebody's going to care or nobody's going to care. We'll yeah. figure it out. And the uncanny Omar. What's up, dude? <laughs> I always think I'm on uh, the prices right when you say my name like that. And I got to come on down. One dollar. Uh, I'm doing good, man. It's good to be back. Missed you guys. Uh, had some personal things going on here at home and had to take some time off to do some things. So, uh, wow, we are off to a good start, gentlemen. We already got one dislike. Now, that's either, <laughs> that's either because I'm on the show or uh, Riley's on the show. No, it's because we got we always have those trolls, but whatever. Likes don't mean not anything. You know, it's an engagement. It's an impression. It's they do to me. It all goes up with whatever algorithm. So who cares? Well, we'll I don't have like, like we'll have like sixty thumbs up later. So. I don't like that person either. So, oh, man. <laughs> where's my Girl Scout outfit? Uh, it's not on tonight. I saved that for the Thursday after night. party. Okay, That's so. the after party. Wow, I'm missing out. <laughs> All right. And Jess, how are you doing, man? Since no one asked you or cared. No, nobody ever does. It's fine. I'm okay. I'm fine. Fine. Things are fine. They are. <laughs> no, fine, everything's fine, fine, cool. Fine. Uh, everything's cool, man. Cool. We got a lot to cover. Do we want to talk about... Uh, uh, I mean, I, I can take a bathroom break while you guys talk about Robert Kirkman ending some dumb comics, if you want to. Is the bathroom break literally your commentary on the book? Me, uh, my commentary on the writer. Uh, talk about shitting all over something. Well, no, about I don't, you do, how I, about no, IS, IST real quick before you go oh, to the bathroom well, break? Yeah, of course. Sure. That's Wait, 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 wait. I got the perfect segue. Jess. Tell us where we can get those crappy Robert Kirkman books. <laughs> First of all, we can wish Emily a happy birthday because it's her birthday today. And happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to Emily at IST and SogTrades.com where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts tack on an extra 2% there. Uh, if you order $50 or more in an order and you're in the United States, you get free shipping. The birthday girl, she gets gives you free sir. God. <laughs> you get oh, oh, excellent man, oh. service from the birthday girl at InStockTrades.com. Fabulous customer service is what I'm trying to say. And you get amazing packaging. All of that is at InStockTrades.com. Stick to the script, man. Stick to the script. Well, there is no script. It's it's my memory, and it's not good. So there we go. In Stock Trades is the place to go for your collected edition, including crappy Kirkman books. Quappy. <laughs> right? Like it has a clap? Like it's... <laughs> All right, my dudes, what are we talking about tonight? So we got, of course, new releases. We've got some reviews for a few books uh, that we got from IST. And, uh, of course, the the news that was just dropped to the world about their Walking Dead. And what is that news? If you want me to share it, uh, they... It, yeah, they, so issue 193 comes out this Wednesday, this week, and... It is the final issue of The Walking Dead. This is a big surprise because issues 194 and 95 were already solicited. This issue was not solicited as the ending. Out of 
seemingly left field. Uh, those later two issues have been canceled. This one is being released this week as a 71 page final issue concluding the entire run uh, per Kirkman's words in a way that is according to his plan and is not, he, he never, I think he said that throughout the entire series, he didn't have any basically editorial interference. Mm. And this comes hot off the heels of a huge happening in the previous issues. Something big happened in the last couple issues, um, which I didn't, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it was something that definitely spelt like the end of the series, but I didn't think it would be this close around the corner. And I also not expected it to be a, all of a sudden uh, step on the brakes ending to the series either. So yeah. there is going to be a, uh, a mad dash for this book tomorrow or on Wednesday. So if you have a good local comic book store, I do suggest that you give them a call and say, hey, can you hold a copy for me or, or something like that? Because these are going to fly off the shelves really, really fast. Was there a variant of this one, Gabe? Uh, I believe there is a... Uh, I don't think there is, honestly. I'll, I'll double check, but I do not think there was a B cover for it at all. Gotcha. Okay. So I think it's just the one main cover. And again, it's it's going to fly off the shelves because either the, you know, your local shop, since we all... like I ordered up to 195 You know, we there's yeah. no idea that this is going to be an end, so we just kind of ordered to what our typical orders are. Which is you know pull boxes plus X amount that we think we could sell off the wall. Sure, and that's it. So that's going to be most shops out there, depending on how heavy of a Walking Dead following they have, will depend on how much orders they actually made for that book. I, I from, gotta say, I respect that. Like, uh, despite of how you feel about uh, Robert Kirkman or Walking Dead, that's pretty cool because I like when the creator is the one that gets to make the call. You know, like manga. Like, fuck it, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. And that's it. It's not pushed by editorial mandate or the A and E show that I'm sure they want to pull the plug on soon. Um, what was I gonna say? AMC. I, I feel not like no worries. No one watches it. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like this seems kind of. Uh, um, I haven't seen this before. I haven't seen this happen. Um, in in my years of reading and collecting comics, I, I haven't. I mean, I've seen series canceled and like issues that were already solicited be canceled, but I've never seen something this big just all of a sudden without any announcement just be done like has that have you guys seen that you don't remember the crisis of x factor 150 nobody does because nobody was reading that book at the time <laughs> well it's also the only time i've ever seen this is when it's not really up to the creator's choice where it just kind of just yeah. goes on hiatus and it just never ever comes back right There's plenty of series that does that do that but that's usually series that are like you know not at 100, almost 200 issues either. I, I think my favorite time that this has ever happened with was uh, when Chris Claremont was writing Excalibur. Not the first volume, but the second volume, right? With uh, with Professor X and Magneto after the new X-Men series by Morrison. Mm -hmm. The oh, oh, That Totally Hurts panel that everybody makes fun of. The uh, This was funny. I was in a forum with him. And I said, oh, I, I was subscribing to Excalibur, and I got a letter saying, your subscription to Excalibur is ending, but don't worry, you will be getting new Excalibur number one instead of Excalibur 15. I was like, awesome. And so I wrote on the forum, and Chris Claremont replied back going, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, he himself didn't know there was the, the book was coming back out as new Excalibur, which I thought it was hilarious. But this is, this is big because it's like, almost 200 issues that'd be like if claremont at like issue 209 all of a sudden was like i'm done and then they canceled the series of x-men that is so i think that's right before mutant massacre is what i was trying to yeah get well that at. did kind of happen with claremont but then scott liddell and baby initiated the sure 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 it's yeah. just i i haven't I haven't seen something exactly like this. It's just kind of like when I read the news and even though, and I've mentioned on here before, I don't care that much. I still read the series, but it's like a habitual thing. Like I'm just reading it because I've been reading it for forever. It, it caught me super by surprise. I was like, wait, what, what, what it's ending. What? Um, I think that was literally the response that I had in the chat. When geo shared the link, I said, WTF or just what? 
Yeah, but you know, he he's ending it on his own terms. He even said he wants yeah. to end it before it, it kind of wears out its welcome. Yeah, or whatever. I think there might be more. It sounds like I'm getting a feeling there might be more to it. Like maybe there's some kind of discrepancy or, or, or behind the scenes fighting or or something like that for this to end this way without any kind of yeah like hyperboil attached to it or announcement or, or you know special covers. Because I looked it up, there's only one cover for this book, so it you know, and they they've done multiple covers for other anniversary type issues. Yeah, so, uh, anytime there was like a, a special event or something happening i know and with issue 100 there was like a million covers right i had and then the, this is also the week that the commendative issue or it's commendative like reprint of like you were saying what the, the big thing that happened the last couple issues actually comes out too so there's gonna be two big walking dead books coming out this week that's crazy and it, it goes against his like and I, i'm a man of habit so it goes against his like Habitually has six issues per paperback, 12 issues per hardcover, 24 issues per omnibus, 48 issues per compendium. So it, it goes against that by one issue, the, the six issue pattern. So I don't, I don't know, like if they're just, I guess they're just going to pack that extra 71 page issue into the last volume, uh, 32. Or yeah. maybe do like a fable to make that the last volume too. Yeah, they could do that too. It'd be a short last volume, but they could do it. Uh, so, yeah. Times. so yeah, Walking Dead just doesn't care. Mm -mm. Um, uh, and then new releases and our review books. Now, I my my wife is like, we need you to wrap up in an hour. We have to do this stuff. It's it's since it's my birthday this week. My family's coming in town. I need to clean up this entire mess of a place. Yada yada yada. So just letting you guys know. Um, if y'all don't mind like doing reviews before new releases. Okay. Sure. Um, I'll, pull, I'll, I'll pull it dress and go to the bathroom real quick then. Sure. I think <laughs> we, we, we usually do that anyway. I think okay. we usually yeah. do reviews and then releases to keep people. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's uh, go ahead. You want to talk about Venom first, right? Because that's like the best book ever. <laughs> Arr. I got my Venom shirt on and ready. So I, I recommended um, these this series um, for us to check out because I thought it was it was timely given how popular and how well received the Donny Cates run is and that this run was really completely overlooked. And I completely honestly forgot a lot about what happened in this story. I remembered the basic premise from the beginning, uh, what happens. And then after that, I just don't remember a lot about it. So I thought it might be a good idea to revisit this series um, with some people that hadn't read it before and then kind of give thoughts on it um, as kind of the overlooked middle child between all the, the Agent Venom stuff with like Remender and Bun and then the Donny Cates uh, kind of retcon of the symbiote's history that's coming on right now. Um, so that's what, what I pitched to us to, to read this for. Um, like I mentioned, I'd read this when it was in singles. I largely forgot about it. And for whatever reason, I'm kind of on a Venom Spider-Man, a Spider-Man kick, which turns into a Venom kick as well in collecting like a bunch of different Venom stuff and rereading stuff. Um, Jess, I know you expressed positivity towards this, having just recently read this for the first time. Um, so I think you should talk first. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, actually, I, um, I'll i be the uh, first to admit that I, I don't have a lot of experience with Venom. Um, and I thought it was interesting uh, mostly because uh, I had not – I've read some Venom, not a whole heck of a lot of Venom, but I had not heard – a whole lot as much of a dialogue from the symbiote itself um there was a lot of yapping from the symbiote going on between the wearer of the symbiote and the symbiote itself and uh, especially when eddie brock shows up and flash thompson are in the same room uh he, he's like talking to them both and he's got mixed feelings about them both and he's 
the symbiotes just uh and eddie brock is calling him my love and everything and it got really icky and i just thought that was kind of weird um but um i so i got a deeper understanding of what the symbiote um was more of a living entity because um before i had just never really uh heard any thoughts coming from the symbiote itself so i thought that i thought it was interesting and really kind of fun that we got so many thoughts from the symbiote um and that he attached himself um he and he had he seemed i don't know he seemed to have a moral code sometimes but then sometimes he wouldn't um like with leap with lee price when he was mm -hmm. on the uh uh with lee price he seemed to have a moral code sort of um and then uh then when he was with eddie brock he had a different kind of moral code i don't know it seemed to vacillate what his moral code was um i think that was inherited a lot from his time the the symbiote's time with flash okay um especially and i i like i have very little memory of the the other series that came around this time was venom space knight where this is like during the time that flash is a member of the guardians of the galaxy and i think there was a whole arc that dealt a lot with like mor his morality um as far as what you're talking about but now i'm sitting here like shit now i have to reread that series because i don't remember what that was about like, I don't remember how that came about, but that seems to be what they were teasing. And, and the symbiote's, like, been ripped away from Flash and is forced with this guy who does not have that same moral code. So it's it's become used to and become accustomed to and enjoyed the fact that it was a good guy at this yeah. point. Yeah. Um, really quick, when does this take place? How far uh, before the, I guess, Donny Cates run? And after the Rick Remender run, so was there a, was there a series before this that yeah, was also Venom? That's what I was just mentioning. Was it was uh, Venom Space Knight, Venom Agent of the Cosmos or whatever? Um, during the latter part of Bendis's Guardians, yeah, when, when he joined Venom, the Guardians, yeah. mm -hmm. Venom's in space. It's written by Robbie Thompson, and the first part has art by Ariel Olivetti. I don't remember what the art on the second part was. Okay. Because I have been out of touch with Venom since the, uh, I guess, the '90s, and then I read, you know, the death of Eddie Brock, which was what it, that Marvel Knights, Mark Miller hush ripoff, and then I read the Rick Remender stuff, but that was a different Venom. I mean, that was yeah. Flash and the symbiote just chilling together and becoming a completely different character. So this. Man, it was just, I don't know. I thought it was coming back with uh, something new, I guess. Now, I've read Donnie Cates' run. Yeah. And that's something a lot different. He's doing a lot different, like building his own mythos out of it, which is really cool. I, I can't add much more to what you guys are talking about other than I had fun with it, but I really like the art. I know it's crazy 90s stuff that Gabe would probably really like too. It's, uh, what's his name? Raphael uh, Sandoval. Is that his name? Is it Rafa Sandoval or is it the other? Oh, Sand it's Gerardo. <laughs> it's Gerardo. Yeah. Gerardo Sandoval. Man, Gerardo I'm, Sandoval. Who has a very, I want to say, Umberto Ramos, Joe yes. Madera style and totally on purpose, right? But the guy that drew this guy right here, um, what is his name? Trad, Trad Moore. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. That was really yeah. cool. That I love, I love so Luther's. Cool. I love I love this issue a lot more, but uh, also a fan of uh, Luther Strode. Yes, that, that comic book is so ridiculous and so awesome. His but, work on the uh, new Silver Surfer Black is out of control too. Yeah, yeah, I've been wanting to check that out. So I really like the way he draws the symbiote. I like, was it's cartoony, but uh, it works. It's perfect. I was so like I forgot about how good his work on that issue was. And then I was so disappointed when I also forgot he doesn't keep right or drawing no. it for more than the yeah. one issue. And then I went on eBay looking for like posters and pages of artwork or something of Tradmore's Venom, like because I loved the way that it looked so much. Because it, it has a, a good sensibility of like the cartooniness of the honestly like the '90s cartoon, mm -hmm. 
mixed with Tradmore's violent kinetic style from uh, what was it that you just mentioned, Luther Strode. Luther Strode. And it worked yeah. so well. The way that he draws that the symbiote, um, like around Eddie and stuff, especially like the the scenes where it's like opening up its face and stuff, so good, so good. And that issue, even narratively, that issue was stronger. I like that issue. Writing wise, it was a lot yeah. stronger writing wise than the rest of it. Not to say the rest of the series was bad or not fun to read, mm -hmm. but it was like it hit all the right notes um, emotionally. That's that was uh, one of the one that was issue one fifty, right? When they yeah. went back to the numbering, because I saw that this was had a uh, the David Michelini and uh, Ron, Ron Lim, Lim that one. story, even with the colors that are. A throwback to the classic 80s, yep. 90s colors. Yeah, it was a fun run. Now, um, now, what did you guys think of of uh, Lee Price? Because he only lasts for the first six issues of this series, and then it goes back to Eddie. Like, what what did you guys think of that guy? I knew that Eddie was coming back, so I didn't get attached. <laughs> I thought he was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, I guess, the curse and the benefit of keeping up to date with comic books these days. Um, he was okay. I liked the way he started. He was a kind of a hard ass, but then again, so is Eddie Brock, right? Yeah. So I, I wasn't a big, like, I remember when the series was coming out in singles, I wasn't a big fan of Lee. Uh, not just because I was like, man, it's not Flash, it's not Eddie. But to me, he wasn't terribly en enthralling as a character he wasn't that interesting he he didn't have much going behind him except that he was like a kind of a generic gang member who's like i need to work i need to do stuff and he's violent and i think the most interesting part about him was the stuff that jess was mentioning where he and the symbiote are kind of at odds with each other yeah um they're they're disagreeing like he wants to do he wants to go out and you know, be this criminal. Whereas the symbiote's like, I, I, I don't do that anymore. Like, that's not who I am. Um, but I, I remember when it was coming out and my, uh, my brother-in-law texted me like the image. I, I think it was the image from the cover here, the cover of number, I guess, number six. And he was like, dude, check it out. And I was like, I doubt it. Like, I seriously doubt, I bet they're going to bring him back for an issue. And then he's going to go right back to not being venom. So I was very surprised when they actually completely switched gears, I guess, and and brought Eddie back. And it definitely, for me, made this series a lot more interesting. But reading these first two volumes um, made me realize it really gets a lot better in the second half of this series. Like it's like after this material, and once you see, because Mark Bagley comes back on uh, to do art here. His art's really great. The story is a lot more interesting. You have like follow up with Lee, uh, with Lee Price and stuff, and it leads um, into some interesting developments for like stuff in the Spider Man books as well. Um, yeah, I read that today. Um, you read the latter part of everything. I, I read the um, uh, the uh, the crossover thing. Uh, Venom Inc. Yeah, Venom Inc. I read that today. I like that. Yeah. That was fun. So I I need to reread that as soon as I get a chance. I'm like three weeks behind on singles, and I just got a box of new manga that I have to work on. But um, I, I do want to reread the latter half of this series because uh, just getting to this point, and especially rereading that uh, issue 150 with that amazing artwork from Trad Moore, um, made me remember how much I enjoyed the latter part and how much I want to revisit it. I I have a question then. So is, so there's two more volumes of this, right? Of this run, the Mike coast. So, so the way that here, I'm going to go to my closet where I have all my new arrival books from since I've moved into this little shoe box of an apartment. Um, this could get creepy. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I got what I'm getting. I got it. Here's um, this collection of toenails and hair. Yeah, <laughs> my my house, by the way, is uh, like halfway done right now. So I'm really excited about that. We were like discussing with the builder the dimensions and like functionality, I guess, of the room that will be my library. Uh, so anyway, these are the next like 
three volumes for the series. The volume three is this one, Blood in the Water. Uh, this one, I believe, yes. That's, Mark, the, that's the one I read, and then I read uh, Venom. And then, and the, yeah, and that's where Mark Bagley comes back is on that Blood in the Water. Jess really liked Venom. Yeah, um, I did. Here's it was fun. Venom Inc. So this is a crossover between Amazing Spider-Man during towards the end of uh, Dan Slott's run on the series. This is one of the arcs that did not get collected in oversized hardcover. So they did worldwide volumes one, two, three in hardcover, and then they skipped this and one more like short arc. I think it was like, the, uh, the the Secret the Empire Secret time. Empire. Mm -hmm. And then they, they went to the last Red one. Goblin. Yeah. Yeah. So this happens in between there. It has uh, issues. There's Venom Inc. Alpha and Omega, Amazing Spider-Man, 792 and 793, and then Venom numbers 159 to 160. And then that leads directly into the final volume, which is uh, titled Nativity, which has 161 and 164 to 165. Issues 162 and 163 were part of another crossover that has nothing to do with this material. It's written by uh, Colin Bunn. And it was a crossover with his all new X Men, or no, his uh, X Men Blue series. And it starred those young X Men. It was called Poison X, and it was part of the uh, Venomverse and Venomized yeah. little kind of event story. Yeah, that crossover was pretty bad. It was out of left field. <laughs> it completely interrupted stuff. And that's one of the. I was annoyed because. Yeah, like I, the entire cast of your X Men book is gone. And they completely. <laughs> changed it to where that one was focusing on the kids all of a sudden it's focusing on like a random havoc team havoc polaris yeah yeah it's weird but whatever it's x-men but it was annoying because then this like winds up being a three issue trade paperback and so because it's so thin they shove two issues of amazing spider-man 362 and 363 in there to to pad it out and make sure they can the carnage issues uh yep. yeah yeah let's say carnage wait that can't, that's stupid. That's Carnage Part Two and Three. They have to have Three Sixty One in there too, right? Nope. No. <laughs> what? Literally, it goes from that's the last, part two. The yeah. last page, and then it goes to Part Two. <laughs> Who mapped that out, Jess? I got no idea. You're the man. <laughs> I don't map books for Marvel. I just make fun of the people that map books for them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> How you're not going to include Part One? Whatever. It says, relive the first classic clash with Venom's odious original offspring, the psychopathic Carnage, and celebrate three decades, blah, 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 blah. So Venom's been around for 30 years. He's a little older than I am. Um, oh, yeah. God. I'll be, I'll be 29 this week, so I am a, <laughs> like a year younger than this guy. And just like that with one sentence, Riley made me feel like an old man. <laughs> uh, I don't need to make you feel like an old man. You are an old man, bro. Okay. Thanks for reminder. <laughs> you might you might look like we're the same age. I am an old man. You are correct. <laughs> uh, so Venom, fun. That's all I'll have to say. You guys want to move on to X Men so Riley can get out of here before we do the previews and sure. Gabe can join the conversation. Yeah, let's keep talking. Uh, Uncanny X Men is back. Uh, this is probably the fifth time they've revamped it. Uh, I need a. I don't know. I can't think right now. Uh, this is issues one through 10. Uh, this is the same kind of format that Avengers was done. The Avengers, the hell was it called? No, 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 no surrender. surrender. Yeah. Weekly. Every week you had a new book because it was written by four different people. Ed Brisson, Matthew Rosenberg, Kelly Thompson, three people. Can't count. Math is hard. <laughs> I can't. I'm so not pulling down my pants. And, yeah, my man, you already know. <laughs> I got so excited. I'm, I'm such an idiot. God, I hate myself sometimes. Like <laughs> Every time the damn series gets revamped, I'm like, oh, my God, X-Men's coming back. X-Men Gold. This is going to be awesome. Oh, shit. New X-Men by Grant Morrison. This is going to be amazing. Astonishing X-Men. It's going to be the best. No matter what it is, I get excited. Yeah, even, even a little bit, I hate to admit, like, Bendis is taking over and uh, X-Men. It could be good. He could do something different. Maybe this is his calling. It was good. And shut up. <laughs> and then we get some powers of 10 in like two weeks, bro. Yeah. And I'm excited too. Like a freaking giddy little schoolgirl waiting on her date. Man, I'm like, oh, it's coming. Oh my gosh, it's going to be great. So I got excited with this. I'm like, they're revamping it. Got a new team. Oh, I see some familiar faces. Uh, not Asian Psylocke, but whatever. That's another story. But everything else, I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. So I read the first issue and it's kind of like, 
man, this would be really confusing if I didn't read the Madrix and uh, uh, the Multiple Man and New Mutants. Yep. Uh, comics leading up to this, but nowhere in here do they say anything about that. So, okay, whatever. Uh, so the X Men are battling a bunch of multiple mans, Jamie Madrex, and that's where it kicks off. And I got excited, and then by issue nine, I was like, "Yeah, I'm done with X Men again." <laughs> but, but I was told, and this always happens. I was told, dude, you got to keep on reading. It gets better, like around issue ten. And I'm like, what a fucking coincidence! I gave up on issue nine. This always happens. <laughs> so I, I dude, did. I, issue I get 10. really hyped a little bit later on. I think it's issue twelve. Like, there's some oh. cool stuff where all these characters that we haven't seen in a long, long time come back. So, this is a forty dollar book by Marvel Comics. It collects the first 10 issues. Now, that's retail price, of course. Um, I'm not a fan of the build of the book. This is, this reminds me of people's issues with some of the epic books. Like, mm -hmm. I think it depends on where it's printed, but yes, yeah, you can see, like, the cover itself. It's really flimsy. Like, for a $40 book, that's a pretty flimsy cover. At least my copy is. Yeah, I don't know. A little bit, yeah. yeah, exactly. And I mean, I just, I, all I did was read it. How Remember was, when when that? a book with ten chapters would be about fifty percent thicker than that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because they've they've made these pages so thin, and like, yeah, maybe it's good for shelf space, but longevity of your books, like, I, I don't know how well these are going to last. But oh, you got sweaty I mean, hands. Your it, your pages are wrecked. Yeah, it just yeah. It, sometimes that makes me feel like that. Like if it was one of those old, thicker, like I was saying, books, forty dollars, I might not that so much of an eye but when you pull this out and like i remember when jess got like he was like review books are here and he's like this is 40 dollars. <laughs> this thing's thin well remember it was solicited as a hardcover it was yeah it was so i had no pro i was so excited i'm like oh my god uncanny x-men they're they're following the suit of maybe dc uh rebirth deluxe editions they saw how well those sold we're going to start doing OHCs again because they've been doing it, you know, with a couple of titles like Thor or Miss Marvel. So I got excited. And I'm like, and it's only 40 bucks <laughs> sold. And then when I was doing my solicits on my channel, I was like, what the, f like my natural reaction was like, <laughs> what the fuck? A trade paperback. I have, no idea why still got I have no idea why Marvel still got a hold of me after comments like that. But I was like, ah, it's 10, 10 issues. Welcome to the new norm. That $40 price tag is pretty common right now. That, that Peter Parker Spider-Ham book that came out. But that has Last more issues, week or the week before, it's, still it's a lot. Bucks. It's a lot more material. Yeah, it's a lot more. That's a, that's the size of an epic. That yeah, I get. And epic it's, collections are like twice 10. as much. Uh, twice as much page. Like I'm, I'm gonna do some research while you guys keep talking to make sure. But you I'm go actually, ahead. I'm actually doing a video of I was editing and right before I joined of my epic what it, the Marvel epic collection is. But yeah, it's a picture of this, but it's twice as thick, right, for the same price. And of course, it's older material. I, so I was very surprised that this was forty dollars. Now, okay, let's go back to this to the story really quick. Uh, yeah, the X Men fight. X Men. I don't even know what the hell he's been doing. I thought he was dead for a while. Then he came back during Dark Avengers. And I and I really want to forget that storyline, the dark, the Utopia, Dark Avengers, X Men Legacy, was that where he came, Is that where he came back? And by yeah. the way, uh, Spider Ham is like twice as thick for the same price. It, well, I, no, to, it's this one is two hundred something, and that one's four hundred something pages. I've got Spider Ham Porker. somewhere down here, Peter Porker. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, X Man is back. He's got a cool beard, you know. Uh, Mutant Jesus, you mean? Yeah, and this pretty the the last few issues. That's the problem with this book. I wanted to care about the people in the front, right? I'm like, cool. They're using all these characters, but instead they use the characters I didn't care about. Like the the kids are trapped in this future, and then they have to fight. They're inside of uh, Nate Gray's head. And then Legion comes to the rescue. And they free him. And then I guess that sets up Age of X-Man. Which is, I think, eight? Isn't it eight different series? Uh, it's five. Yeah. Five or, yeah, five. Oh, five, or six. Five, five, six, eight numbers. I don't... I, but they're... 
it, that kind of goes in line with exactly what you were saying. This was a point I was going to bring up with, gee, I'm glad I read the Madrox and New Mutants Dead Souls miniseries because it it's like this thing spins out of some stuff and then it spins into some stuff. And I don't 100% remember the conclusion of this. I haven't read the last, reread the last three issues um, since we were doing this. I got caught up with my my interview today and getting promoted. So sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I'll just throw that out there for you guys. But anyway, um, when picking it up, I felt the same way. I was like, oh shit, like I forgot that this starts like hot on the heels of that miniseries. And if I didn't read that, I wouldn't know what's going on. And I've been reading age of x-man and literally the entire time i've been reading those issues as they come out i'm like how did we get here like what what happened why are we here again yeah and i was like that and it was a weekly series and then i read it in trade paperback format and i feel the same way i'm like wait where are the characters that we were supposed to care about this was advertised as the return of wolverine and the return of cyclops oh that's okay so that continues on to the regular uncanny x-man meanwhile if you want to read what the entire book sets up, you got to read all these other miniseries, not yeah, this book anymore. There's which, six, there's six miniseries. I apologize, not five. I just counted them six. Don't do that again, okay? We don't make mistakes and, on Omni Bros Live. <laughs> <laughs> and they're by a, a cavalcade of writers that does not consist of the writers from this series. So I nobody. Entirely. So okay. So this is a for real question. So then, where does that event wrap up then? If there are six series, it's not like Age of Apocalypse, right? You have an Alpha and Omega. And there wasn't there, an Age of X-Men Alpha? Yes, there was an Age of X-Men Alpha. That's, and okay. There is going to be an Age of X-Men Omega. The The main quote-unquote miniseries is written by uh, Lonnie Nadler and Zach Thompson. And they wrote like a volume of Cable and then an Apocalypse backup story and somehow we're kind of seeding together elements that were coming together to do this. But like the other five miniseries are written by Ed Brisson. So I guess you do have him. He worked on this. Um, Seanan McGuire, Ed Brisson on next gen, Seanan McGuire, who writes spider Gwen, I believe right now, um, prisoner X by Vita Ayala, um, apocalypse and the extracts by Tim Seeley. And then the last uh, one I believe is Extremists by Leah Williams, everyone's new favorite. Um, so a bunch of writers that had nothing to do with this book, and then Ed Brisson, <laughs> <laughs> who okay. has been working on Old Man Logan and X Force. I like I I don't know. It's just to. Because I fall, I follow writers. I, I largely follow writers, and so I look at this stuff and I'm like, "Where's the narrative that this person has been sowing throughout these titles?" And and Rosenberg has a narrative that he has been putting together because Madrox and New Mutants were both Rosenberg. Um, and they were both even, solid. Yeah, they were solid series, and they lead towards elements here, but they even stronger they lead towards when he takes over as the solo writer. Um, on on uncanny x-men and it starts going into the whole like reunion of cyclops and wolverine and then there's el- big elements that are brought back from that dead souls miniseries and stuff like that so that winds up getting continued but it's like reading it again and then looking at all the other books is just this big jumbled mess in my head and i'm i'm like trying to make sense of it and i i cannot make sense of it and i i don't know maybe i'm overreacting uh No, because I want to, I know that, you know, I've been reading X-Men for a long time. So Jess has been really quiet. Jess, did you make sense out of, like, were you confused when you were reading this? How how did you feel? Yeah, yeah. I felt this was a big, jumbled, confusing mess that it felt like there were three different writers writing on three different uh schedules sort of i i didn't feel it like it was cohesive or, or coherent um i i felt that they were sort of competing with each other and i didn't um <clears throat> i didn't feel like it gelled is uh really i didn't um it, it didn't um it didn't gel for me um 
I didn't care for this book much at all. This is not the way to get like to tell people Uncanny X Men is back. Jump on this book and start reading the X Men. Like this is the way to make people like Jess be like, this is really confusing, and I don't know what the hell's going on. And I, I I feel like the what happened was they're like, okay, we need to bring back the main series you guys have been writing some of the X books. So they got Ed Brisson, like I mentioned, he was writing Old Man Logan. His run was getting good uh, feedback uh, from fans and critics and stuff. And then Kelly Thompson is on here and she's always, you know, hitting positive notes on her books. And she's been writing Rogan Gambit, uh, Mr. and Mrs. X, which has been getting, again, positive feedback. And then Rosenberg, we just talked about his miniseries and stuff. So it's like three writers who have been doing positive work with the X franchise. And they're like, we're going to have all three of you come together for the express purpose to basically give the illusion of a new jumping on point for the X-Men. That's going to lead into this entirely random event that is very much like the age of apocalypse, but not the age of apocalypse. And, uh, and there you go. And you guys can just lead into that. And you're not writing it either, but you're going to lead into it. And then you're going to actually write completely different stuff after this. <laughs> and what's funny is this was solicited as, from what I remember, as the ongoing title, even though the writers claimed that it was always supposed to be a small stint until Hickman came over and took over the, the book. So, yeah, 100%. You know, I, I know a lot of people that have been reading X-Men for a while are upset that he's he's looking like he's going to wipe the slate clean. But I'm okay with that. I think a book like X-Men needs it. Got a lot of history together. Um, a lot of decades of history that just doesn't really add to the story. You got so much crap going on. I want people to come into X-Men, you know, and, and enjoy it. Not be confused when, you know, the clone of... The, well, he's not even a clone. I'm sorry. He's a, a, another dimension of uh, son of Madeline Pryor and Scott Summers, right? Son is here out of nowhere, and he's creating a different universe in people's heads, and you have different takes on the same kind of characters you've read, like the blob. I don't know, man. It, this was, it, it was okay, but in the end, I was looking forward to something else, and I did not get it. But, but I do have... but. I do have volume two, so there's that. So did you have you read that volume two yet? Yeah, that's the Wolverine, and uh, that's the one that leads up to I think the last pages. Oh my God, Rain's dead! And I did read those issues, which those were kind of stupid, but whatever. <laughs> do you need to read volume two before you read the these mini series, these six mini series? No, because volume two no. is happening. Can uh contemporaneously with the age of X mini series. Oh, so which X, which shit, I feel like an idiot ask which age of X man trade paperback is going to have age of X man alpha then. Uh, well, that's a good fucking question because according to the solicits, none of them. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> uh, if, if Marvel would know what they're doing, then it should be in the marvelous X men because that's the main title quote unquote, that's the one that focuses on X-Man's retconned team of X-Men. Mm -hmm. um, it's written by Nadler and Thompson, who are both the ones who wrote the Alpha and are writing the Omega one-shots. So it would make sense for it to be included there, but according to the solicit on Amazon, which could be wrong, uh, that book only collects issues one through five of that miniseries. Okay. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, Jess is confused. He's kind of a newer reader to X-Men. I, as equally, am like, how did I get from point A to D? And uh, I think Riley agrees. So, on to volume two. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I guess I can't wait for Jonathan Hickman to take over and see what he does, but I know that's going to take at least 45 issues to play out. So, then there were two. We lost Riley. What? Oh, and, did and, he have to go? And Gabe. I don't know where Gabe went. <laughs> Where'd Gabe go? I guess he got tired of hearing a bunch of X-Men talk. 
<laughs> Jay Rocks, you're right. Marvel has already solicited the Hickman's X Men in oversized hardcover. They have been leaked, and I believe don't have a title yet or page count or anything. So excited about that. All right, guys, I got to go rescue my wife. Uh, it's raining, and she was walking the dogs on a trail, and she got stuck. Ah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thanks, man. Have Thank a good one. Thank you for, for all the fun. That was a really good discussion. And uh, I won't be on on Thursday uh, like I usually am because it, it will be my birthday. Um, Happy early birthday, my dude. Thank you. It's also America's birthday, but I know everyone cares about me more. So that's right. fine. Uh, also true. Thank you very much. So I will see you guys next week, probably on Thursday, uh, where I will not see Omar and Gabe again. So it was a... Ever. A, yeah, I will never see you guys again and for the rest of my life, so it was a, a huge pleasure. Okay, man. Go be a good husband. Take it Peace easy. Peace out. Later, Gabe. Bye, bro. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> Peace out. All okay. right. Let's talk about some solicits, gentlemen. What's coming out this week? I know I've got three books for sure I'm excited about. Uh I'm pretty sure Gabe is excited about one of those books, but let's uh let's look at what's coming up and what's on sale at In Stock Trades. Gabe, you want to share your screen, brother? Yeah, no, not right now. I don't. But give okay. Me a second. <laughs> yeah, in a minute. You know, uh, at, did you guys get the Moon Shadow book? I did. did yeah. Get? You know that damn thing after I it was solicited like four or five times. That thing sold out. It did? Yeah, it went out of print. And well, I mean it's back now. But I had to get one from Amazon because my order at in stock trades, like they were like, we didn't get enough. They're wanting to do a second printing, but we don't know when that will be. Dude, that book came beat the shit. <laughs> it's like, damn it, I've been waiting for this book for like six months. It came beat the shit from Amazon? Yeah, of course it's Amazon. Unexpected. <laughs> Unexpected. I didn't have a choice. I could have waited, but I'm like, I want to read it now. And FOMO. Man. <laughs> no, I said I want to read it, not own it. <laughs> it's open, <laughs> not sealed. All right. What do we got? You want to highlight Gabe and then we can look at the I solicits? Did. I did. All right. Let's rock and roll. Well, let's make this happen. All right, everybody. Here is this week's releases that you can find on In Stock Trades. Starting tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Let's start with the image books. So we got Gasolina Trade Paperback Volume 3. Still have That's no already on Volume 3? Wow. I yeah. heard that was good. Speaking of good books, uh, the, the fan favorite around here is Monstrous. So Volume 1 hardcover comes out this week. Yeah. I like and that cover. Yeah, in stock trades. Speaking of covers, in stock trades has their own cover for this hardcover as well. Ooh. I mean, so you know how some people are about those in stock trade exclusives. Bar Barnes and Noble has one too, and I think that one is signed. But I think that one might be out of print or 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 sold out. So this is oh one through eighteen. That's a pretty thick book. Then right on. Over 500 pages of content, one through 18. It's a really good size hardcover there. Uh, so Dark Horse, we have Bean World Omnibus Volume 2, uh, Crimson Lotus, Hellboy Hardcovers, 25 Years of Covers. <laughs> Shameless plug. If you want to see what it looks like, you can watch my channel. I did a first view of it. It's pretty oh, cool the book. Cover, the, of the mm -hmm. covers? Yep. It's it's as tall as the library edition if you don't want to watch the video, but it's not as wide. I'm not talking about thickness. I'm talking about how wide the book is. So it doesn't – like if you're putting them in your bookshelf, it will, <laughs> it'll go back further into the bookshelf than the library editions. But it is also, as tall. It's not as deep. Right. So, but you can fake it, right? But, yeah, it's not as deep, not as wide. It's all about that girth. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. Uh, massive. That massive – Massive trade paperback or omnibus is getting a trade paperback release. And all right, so I know there's some people in chat. Well, actually, one person in the chat who's craving some DC talk. So here's your DC talk. And that's going to be Batman Deluxe Hardcover Volume 4. 
this starts, let me see what issue this is. I'm pretty sure this starts at the wedding issue. This starts at issue 50, correct? No, I'm totally off. 45 <laughs> through 57. That is not and totally off. You were five issues off. That's pretty I'm good. Totally off. That's, that's, that's 10% <laughs> off. Totally off. You would have been like Detective Comics 37. <laughs> that would have been totally off. So, yeah. So, this is... This seems to be where the fandom of Tom King's Batman decided to kind of split and taper off. And one worshipped at the altar. The other had uh, pitchforks and torches and hated Tom King after this point. Wow. But this is also like the stuff after the wedding is really good stuff, in my opinion, as well. So volume four hardcover comes out this week. Uh, Joker trade paperback, black label. This is from Brian Azzarello and Lee Berhamo. Uh, shameless plug, Lee Berhamo will be in the store July 27th. What's he going to be doing? Signing and probably maybe <laughs> sketching. I knew he was signing, man. <laughs> yeah, but he'll also be there with our buddy, Ron Mars. Ooh, I love that guy. Yeah, he was on the show. He did an interview with us. Super cool. Uh, JSA by Jeff Johns, trade paperback volume three, Red Hood and the Outlaws volume one. This is a new like relaunch with the new design for Red Hood. Huh? Just in case you want to be confused. It's a continuation. What does it collect? Uh, Outlaws annual number two. Red Hood Outlaws 26 to 31. So keep that in mind. Treasure trove of behind the scenes artwork. <laughs> keep that in mind. This is a volume one collecting issues 26 to 31. Thanks. This is a volume one that you're going to put right next to your volume four, four. or wherever <laughs> that one was left off on. And will be the correct reading order continuation <laughs> of this series written by Scott Libdell. I think Jess has been trying to say something. Color. Yeah, it's 50% off. There you go. <laughs> Uh, wasn't what was the the discount on Batman? Just forty two percent off. Forty two percent off. Okay. Now down into Marvel, we have Adventures of X Men Graphic Novel Volume One. That is fifty percent off. I'm not sure what this is. Omar, do you have any idea what this is? Uh, this is the cartoon, isn't it? Like based on the cartoon, the Adventures of X Men. Yeah, that's the cartoon stuff. Because look at the price; it's twelve ninety nine. So it's the digest size stuff. All right, and then uh, Cable and X Force Omnibus. That is fifty percent off. Otherwise known as X Force Volume Three. Yeah, I was about to say this is another confusing one where it's X Force Volume One, Deadpool and X Force, and now it's Cable and X Force. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Conan the Barbarian uh, Volume One. This is the new Jason Aaron, and uh, is it Mamu Asra doing the art on this or? Jess is the pronouncer of words. Jess, how do you say that man's name? Uh, 50% off. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, Mahmoud Asara. That's such a lawyer answer. All right. <laughs> and then we have uh, Marvel's Conan, Trey Paperback, Jewels of whatever, 50% off. <laughs> I don't know what that word is. And other stories. So we've got a, a bunch of Conan coming out this week. Uh, King Size Kirby. Kirby is mighty. This is another one of those uh, extremely extra large uh, hardcovers. Uh, this is going to be collecting a bunch of Thor stuff. And my dog is barking. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fucking eat her if she doesn't shut up. She stuff with that got dark. <laughs> well, she is a wiener dog. So I'll just put some ketchup and mustard on her and I'm just going to just go to town. Okay. Uh, another great hardcover coming out this week. Uh, we have Silver Surfer Parable. This yes. is the yes. awesome art by Mobius, one of his very, very few uh, comics work, well, mainstream Marvel type comics work. And it's, of course, on uh, an awesome Galactus Silver Surfer story written well, by Stan Lee. What's um, how big? What are the dimensions on this book? Uh, I've been trying oh, to figure that out. It is also 50% off. That's what's up. Nine and a quarter by 13. Okay. Jess, how big is that? Uh, like a piece of paper, like a notebook paper. Hmm. Okay. So it's gonna be like a, it's like a standard size hardcover then. Yeah, that's what it's like. Uh, 
And uh, speaking of epic collections, uh, Star Wars Legends epic collection newspaper strips, trade paperback. I, I think we get one a month of the Star Wars, and it looks like it's going to be Conan books too. It could be sixteen a month, and I would just never, never care and all about it. Okay. Not a Conan fan, or or just uh, both, really. Star Wars, Conan, or Star Wars? Yeah. Hmm. And that's only because I've never really read any of the Conan, the Marvel Conan stuff. So whatever. All right. Uh, boom. We have Coda, the first trade paperback of that coming out. Go Go Power Rangers Volume Four, and this is a great book here. If nobody's picked this up before, um, it used to be. Uh, I don't know the size it was, but it was a really cool hardcover when it first came out. Uh, Jim Henson's uh, Tales of Sand graphic novel. And who did the artwork on that? Do you remember? I remember somebody telling me and Jess that we need to get that. Yeah, I remember that too. That's right. Yeah, was if it... you guys haven't read this before, it is it is mm. great. Like the artwork is is really clean and it's stylized, but not like over the top stylized. It's it's a great great book. I want to say I always run across the hardcover at in, at uh, half price books. Like it seems like one of those books that they bought every one of the copies of the hardcovers, <laughs> and they're sitting on them. That that's what it feels like. It's worth picking up, man, for sure. All right, I'll get it next time I see it. Then, what's next? Uh, over the garden wall. You get this stuff, don't you? For your mm -hmm. for your daughters, I thought. No, uh, I heard it's good though. It's a cartoon, right? Based on a cartoon. No idea. It's a cartoon. Uh, apparently, it says Cartoon Network. So, uh. and Smooth Criminals Volume One. And here is Omar's section. We have Omar here this week to kind of help us out, point <laughs> out anything that might be of interest to some of the manga readers I, out there. I am this. so I'm so lost with new manga as much as you all, except maybe I can recognize that it's manga. Although I heard Doctor Stone is the shit. And I've looked at some of the inside artwork, and it looks awesome. Uh, complete peanuts, trade paperbacks, collecting those hardcovers, now available in trade paperback. Oops. Uh, Sledge, I'm sorry. Thorgal 21 is not listed here in my uh, previews sheet. So I don't know what the discount will be. I apologize. This Eleanor stuff seems to be pretty popular. We always get people looking for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Looks like My Hero Academia. I know that's a thing. That's a big one. Oh, here you go. Uh, Terrell, which of the Black Rose? Heart there we go. There's some anniversary. There's some Jess books. <laughs> right, there, right there above <laughs> Zombie Tramp, volume were, 17. If I worked at a comic book store and Jess had a folder at my store, I knew that I would put two copies of these books in there. <laughs> one for him to read and one for him to use. So, I got you, my dude. What the hell? <laughs> I I work uh I used to work at a comic book store and I didn't I didn't work there when these books were coming out. But apparently, this is a small town in Kentucky, by the way. Tarot was the best-selling book at this comic book store where I was. Like, um, where I used to work. And because it had two copies, each one of the books had, like, a variant copy, right? So the guys that would collect them would collect both copies. It, like, so in a small town in Kentucky, Tarot, that book that we just looked at, Jim Ballant, right, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. It, of course you know. Um, the, <laughs> you know <laughs> too. I worked at a comic book store. I have to know these things. I don't own them. <laughs> and I, I'm not shaming you if you do. That's cool. I'm sure I, Omar owns this somewhere. I, I own a lot of weird shit. <laughs> On a high shelf. Uh, I need to move my stuff higher. My girls are getting taller. So, <laughs> But I was like, it's outselling. Like, this is when new X-Men was dropping, too. Or, no, this is when Joss Whedon's X-Men, Astonishing X-Men, was dropping. And I was like, really? It's outselling Astonishing X-Men. They were like, yeah, man. We had, like, 102 copies of those books. In a small town in Kentucky, though. Well, I have to keep upping orders for Zombie Tramp, and it's nothing that angers me more that I have to order more of that stupid book. <laughs> <Zombie Trump. laughs> I I don't you know I laugh I haven't read it so I mean it could be great 
I don't know. Maybe I'm missing. Well, out. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. That book has got to be good. I'm sure that's why people read it in order. I mean, some it's people a good read. Some people frown on Minara. I mean, that the dirty old man book, but I love that dude's artwork. It's freaking brilliant. So I get it. I'm not shaming anybody. I am. Forget him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the guy that announces the <laughs> at the comic book store when you slip the guy the brown bag? You're like, oh, here's the guy that gets the booby books. No, everybody. But you know, I do hold a judgmental part in my mind of everybody that has that book on our pull list. Gotcha. Okay. Especially the guy that has Zombie Tramp, and then he also gets a like, little kid books too. And I'm like, oh, put that guy on the list. All right. So, is that it? Are we done? So, I believe that's it. All these uh, information, not all the information about the prices, but I will be putting up some of our uh, spotlighted titles for this week and their prices and discounts on Instagram. So hit us up on Instagram. Follow us there. Boom. All right. So that's it. Are we out? We're going to do some Q&A. What's up? Um, whatever you guys want to do. It's fine with me. It's just a little bit after nine. So we've been on about an hour. So, uh, um, I can I can hang on for about ten minutes. Uh, I haven't been on for a couple of weeks, and we can sit around and talk about feelings. I mean, what you guys <laughs> wanna do? Do you guys want to do that? This is gonna be the, the, the cathartic episode of. Uh, or do you, I, did you guys life. already do that on Sunday? Did you guys already do that on Sunday? I think that's what happens on Sunday, right? Sunday is the feelings episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. The emotions episode. Can't I can't deal with that right now. So that's why I haven't joined on Sundays. Uh, no. What's new with you guys? Enjoying your summer? Uh, yeah. Okay, that was a lot shorter than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, I'm running. Out, I'm out of questions. Well, I got. Uh, I'm taking off for uh, San Diego in a couple of weeks, so I'm yeah. looking forward to that. What are you? Uh, what are you looking forward to? Uh, our huge unveiling of all of our crazy books that we got. Uh, we're gonna have a whole new like showcase style booth this year. Mm -hmm. uh, because we bought this uh, crazy collection and the books are coming back and we're going to display them and put them up for sale for the first time at San Diego Comic-Con, which includes a uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 9.4. That, is amazing. that is, got, amazing. All right, I gotta mm -hmm. right. is amazing. All right, I got to ask. Let's play Prices Right. Wait, does Jess know the price yet? I know the ballpark. All right, what's the ballpark? What are you throwing out? Just uh, out of here. I think it's one point two. One point two thousand dollars. One point two thousand dollars. One point two million. Well well, eight years ago a nine point six sold for like one point two, one point three. That's eight Ooh. years ago. That's before you know the movies and, and all that stuff came up. I so, don't think I own a comic that I bought yesterday at nine point six. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't. You're a little rough on your, on your I am I, yeah, because I'm curling I, on that uncanny X Men. Because I read the that. damn things. <laughs> damn, who, who had a damn 9.6 Amazing Fantasy, right? First appearance of Spider-Man. Right. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a couple of those out there in the world, but not a that lot. That is Same with this 9.4. I think there's less than 10 out there in the world. So your store got one in. That's right. Somebody came into your store and said, hey, I have this 9.6 Amazing Fantasy. And you were like, okay, I'll give you three Snicker bars. <laughs> yeah, I totally game stopped them. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Trey, I, want, I want trade-in credit. <laughs> It's actually a ma just this massive collection that John bought that he's been working on for, for years and years and years with this collector. Mm -hmm. uh, and it came out of there. There's two AF-15s in there, actually, but this is the higher grade one. This is another one that's probably going to be like a mid-grade, maybe like in the 8s, 8.0, maybe 8.5. Right. Uh, there's a Journey in Mystery 83, the first Thor, that we're suspecting to be a 9.6. Oof. God wow. bless, dude. Who, what, what kind of human being kept their books in that condition back then? It happens. No, nobody knew it was going to be worth money back then, right, Jess? Well, he, the guy Remember? was just a, a crazy pop culture collector. Like he had tons of baseball cards and like all kinds of other like, movie memorabilia and things. I take it back. back. I'm sure people knew that some of this stuff was going to be worth some money. There was all. There's always been collectors. Just man, that's crazy. One point two million, huh? Whew. Yeah, if you see me at Comic Con, take a picture. I'll say hey. I'll say what's up. You can grab my butt. Not really. But I'll take a picture. With what? 
somebody in the chat goes, if, 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 you say, if, I, if you say hi to you, will you say hi back? Of course I'll say hi back. Gabe's a good guy. He will yeah. say hi back. Speaking of being a good guy, I totally forgot to mail out your uh, your signed art germ comics. You know, I'm not the type of guy that uh, holds on to the past, so I'm over that. I just found them. That's what it was. I had it in my in my. <laughs> You're like, in my I need to, I need to sell these. These. Have <laughs> <laughs> I tried to sell them, but nobody would buy them. So I, thought, you know, I might as well just mail these back to Omar. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's what friends are for. Uh, yeah, man. I'll take them whenever you yeah, get a chance. Yeah, I, I, I stashed them in a, in a, my secret hiding spot, and I totally forgot about them. Yeah, you. I remember you had my Monara book, man. You're a true friend. You you kept my Monara book for like two years or a year at least. Yeah. And I was like, I'll I'll meet you in Vegas sometime, and when I was gonna go back, and then you ended up just coming up to Chicago, and I'm like, cool, I'll meet you there. Don't forget my booby book. Yeah, was it, did I give that to you in Chicago? I forgot. You I did. You did. Yeah. Somebody um, the super chatted two bucks so that Omar can have a joint on Sunday. I, what is that? Uh. That's What's literally it? what it says. I can for two dollars. Shit. Yeah, what is that? I don't think two dollars so Omar can buy a joint. Apparently, okay on Sunday. That's a small. La- I don't even get a hit for that anymore. If I was still smoking, that is. But thank you. Now we just need some more uh, super chat money for uh, Justice Pain medications prescription. <laughs> I've hit my um, deductible. It's all free now at this point. Nice. Thank you, though. Holy shit, Jess. You hit a deductible? Deductible? Yeah. Because <laughs> of my hernia surgery, yeah. Oh, man. That must be nice to have that uh, that good uh, Medicare that you got going on. Medicare? I'm not there <laughs> yet. Fucker. You got, you got your uh, AARP card yet? Oh, long ago. When you turn 50, they send you that. <laughs> the, do you get discounts? You, I would use the shit out of that. Uh, uh, I, I haven't yet. What? Just God, I hate people with money. I don't need it. I'm too embarrassed. Oh, the rich just keep getting you richer. <laughs> Dude, let me borrow your AARP card. I want discounts at movie theaters and McDonald's. I would uh, get free coffee. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't don't even coffee. I don't think I'm old enough for that yet. You have to be older than 60 to get any kind of discounts. Oh, I thought that's what the card gave you. Ah, never mind. No, you got to be older than that. I don't want it. Keep it. No, he's got his AARP and probably a AAA card and stuff like that to get discounts on hotel rooms and random stuff. Oh, I yeah. definitely do that. I yeah. use AAA to get discounts. Okay, now we're talking. See, that's what I want to do. Well, you can do that now. You just have to belong to AAA. I do. Oh, well, then go right yeah. ahead. I do belong to AAA. I forgot about that. I just thought ARP, like you could put it on top. Like, why are we having this conversation? Were there any questions in the chat? <laughs> uh, Jess, what was monstrous? What was the discount on monstrous? That was, uh, I think, 42. Let me check real quick. Somebody's it was here. not 50%. Uh, 42, yeah, and they have uh, the DCBS as its own variant. 42. Also 42% off? Yeah, they're both 42. Very that's, cool. Wow, that's a, a $50 book. That's a big book. Yeah, it's 18 issues. Wow. I don't know what size the issues are. It says it was like 500 pages. So. That's a Wow, that's a big book. That is, I love that book. Love that book. I'll be picking it up. I got rid of my first trade paperback in hopes that they were going to make it. I mean, there was no way they were not going to make it a hardcover. Right. It, it's a beautiful artwork. I want to read it because you guys keep talking about it. And a bunch of the stuff I read this week was because Omar and Jess and you guys talked about it. So I read a bunch of stuff you guys recommended. But that, like, one of the things you guys recommended was Monstrous. And I was just waiting for the hardcover to come out. So I know Gio is a huge fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. Wonderful. It's a manga. Jess just doesn't know it. <laughs> it's fine if it is. It reads great. Yeah, because it reads freaking left to right in your American style. See, that's how I trick you into reading manga. I need to just mirror the books for you. Yeah, if they're mirrored, then I can read them. I think I can do that. Some of the manga, like Blade of the Immortal, was done that way. 
So are you double dipping then, Jess? You already have the trades for Monstrous or what? Uh, I do have the trades, but I'm in a massive purge right now, giving stuff away to the library. So I'll just toss them in there to give to the library. Cool. I usually st steal my stepdad, so I don't know the price. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Justin Page. Um, hold on. There, there's Chris M was asking if anybody he is watching euphoria on hbo uh yeah i am and it makes me scared that i have daughters show's pretty uh pretty rough it reminds me of all the stupid shit i did in high school too i have no idea what that show's about it's uh it's like a life in the kid like uh kids in high school one it's what's her name Cindaya, the girl that played mary jane oh okay. it's spider-man she plays the lead. She's like a recovering addict. Yeah, but she's in high school, you know, finding your true self and drugs, sex. That's it. Just uh, lots of drugs and sex. It reminds me of that movie Kids. Have you ever seen Kids? Yeah. So think of Kids, but update it with like Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Tinder, things like that, and being in yeah. high school. Yeah, because it's because kids kids messed me up when I saw that in pretty yeah, sure I think early that, high school days. And I think that was the purpose of it, right? And so was so is this show to make uh, to make you aware. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant this show. No, not this show. Well, maybe this show. Um. Okay. So is that it, gentlemen? I Calling think so. it a day. I think so. All Omar. right. Where can they find you? What's going on tomorrow night? Uh, I'm going to take my family to go see a movie. So we're taking a break from Old Reader, New Reader, and coming back all... Uh, oh. We're coming back the following. Not tomorrow, but next <laughs> Tuesday. We'll be oh. back next Tuesday. But thank you for the plug, Jess. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I really Tune appreciate it. next time on Omni Rules Eyes. We continue the weird <laughs> talk, apparently. <laughs> Are we still talking about that? <laughs> this is what somebody said in the chat. <laughs> Chris um, but you can find me on my channel, Near Main Condition. And um, I've got a lot of shows, including one tonight about the Marvel Epic Line with a giveaway. With a giveaway. Sponsored by Marvel. So, yep. That's where you can find me. And then hanging out with these cats. I'm back. I'm sorry I took a break. Like I said, I was dealing with some personal issues. but We all need I'm, it. I'm here. This, these guys make me feel better. We give each other a lot of shit, but I love these guys. So. Well, that's what makes you feel better is is the love. Does. The if I don't, if love. I don't make Jess cry, by the time the episode is over, my life is not complete. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got about thirty more seconds. I can text him later. The <laughs> 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 night's still young. <laughs> uh, Gabe, where can I find you? All right, you can find me Instagram Gabe Infinity Watch. Again, hit up. Uh, Omni Bros live on Instagram for up to date information about Omnibus and all that kind of cool stuff and the show. And I'll be in San Diego July 16th through the 21st, I believe it is. It's Tuesday. Is that Tuesday till Sunday? I'll be there. So let's do a uh, Omni Bros meetup. Any of the Omni Bros out there, go to San Diego. Let me know. We'll, uh, we'll hit up a bar and I'll drink some water. Man, Ooh. Jess is or Gabe is sticking to his guns. Very proud of you, man. That's awesome. Well, maybe some. I'll have some whiskey because there's no like carbs and bad sugar and stuff like that. And whiskey. what is it? It's like clear, clear liquor, right? That's that's better because it, it has less. Why do I know this shit? I know. Like, well, I since, since when is whiskey clear, Omar? Could you put bourbon or could you put oh, cranberry be, juice in it? Before you put it in a barrel, my friend. It's all green. Cool. Jess, where can they find you? Uh, Omnidogs Vault on YouTube and Omnidogs underscore Vault on Instagram. And I kind of highly doubt we're going to have a show Thursday night since it's 4th of July. Uh, I think all, all these imps here on the show are going to be out there lighting their M80s and <laughs> running away from the pumpkins and stuff that they hide them in. Things like that. Blowing up pumpkins. I'm getting it mixed up with Halloween. Sorry. Yeah. How American are you? <laughs> no, we put them in people's uh, mailboxes. Right. Uh, 
yeah, so I kind of doubt we're going to have a Thursday show. I I know Riley's out, and um, I doubt many people would be tuning in anyway. It's Fourth of July, hot dogs, fireworks, things like that. So what are you what are you doing this Halloween? I mean, God damn it, Jess! What are you doing this Fourth of July then, Jess? Are you not <laughs> going anywhere? Uh, I could do it, but I'm I I think I'd be alone. I don't think anybody else can do it. What about Geo? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to talk uh, to him. I thought uh, Luis said something about doing like an early show. Like oh, show. yeah, that's right. Thank you. That's right. Uh, Gabe is completely right. We're going to have a, a early daytime show on 4th of July. Uh, sometime during the day, probably mid-morning, uh, right. early we got, afternoon. We got fans from across the sea that don't give a shit about the 4th of July, or America for that matter. But, you know, <laughs> we make books here. <laughs> That's right. No, Luis did say that. Yeah, we're going to have like a mid-morning, uh, early afternoon show. Boom. Gabe, thank you for getting me back on track. Right on, man. All You're right. welcome. We all serve a purpose on this show. I have yet to find mine. So, gentlemen, <laughs> you, all, you all have a great day. It was a lot oh, of fun. And, uh, of course, uh, InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. If you order $50 or more in an order, you get free shipping in the United States. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. Happy birthday, Emily. And with that, we're off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace and love. Peace and love. Good night, everybody. m 80s in the toilet is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>